Hello, I'm the Gypsy and you're not, and I'm glad you've come back here to join me for the continued work on my newest watercolor, the Italian Tourist Market. At least that's what we're calling it for right now. It may get a different name later. But if you recall from the first video, I'm actually doing a painting based on a photograph that I took of a photograph at Olive Garden in Topeka, Kansas. In the first video I did, you saw me do the sketch. In this video, what you're going to see me do is do the prep before I actually do the watercolor. I'm adding water to the paper so I can do the watercolor. Let me So explain. what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add water to the paper, okay? I just have a soft brush and I'm just going back and forth, strokes back and forth across horizontally. Just putting water onto the paper. Oh, look, it's trying to jump up there on me. Just putting this water to the paper. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is this is a cold pressed paper. Watercolors are a lot more vibrant when they're moist. That is to say, when they go on moist. When they dry, they will continue to have that vibrance that they did when they went onto the paper if the paper has some moisture to it. So, by putting moisture to the paper like this, what it will help is for the watercolors to flow smoothly onto the surface and to stay. Now, because this is a cold pressed paper, it holds its moisture for roughly about three days. Now, watercolors are fluid, and you should actually be able to get through a watercolor faster than three days, but if something happens that you have to extend that time, then three days, that's your max. Now here's the deal. You can see that this paper is bubbling up, which is exactly what I want it to do. It will flatten itself back down. And I won't put any paint to the paper until it does flatten itself back down. But I want that moisture to sink into this cold pressed paper. Once the paper relaxes, that's what I call it. I call it relaxing. Once that paper relaxes and this bubbling isn't here, then I will start working the paint. Now the way I'll work the paint is I'm going to start up at this corner here. I'm right handed. I'm going to start at this corner here and I'm going to work my way in this direction like this. This is how I'm going to paint. Okay. If you were left handed you'd do just the opposite. You'd start in the upper right hand corner and work your way back down to the lower left hand corner. The reason why you do this is you don't want to drag your hand over the paint, which could happen. If you do it this way, the paint should always be behind you and not in front of you in the direction you're going. Now granted, when you're working in a certain color, like when I work in the background color here, which is where I'm going to start in this area and this area, I will come from here and I'll come over here and do this. But again, I won't be dragging my hand through the paint. When I start working on the lower colors back here, which are, these are all the background colors, okay? Again, I'll start from this direction. I'll work over this way. You'll see it happen when I do it. That way, again, I'm not dragging my hand through the paint. When I do this section, I'll do the same thing. You can break this off into sections and get it together. And then finally, you get the finished piece and you have a beautiful piece of art. Or at least that's what you're heading for. Who knows? You might end up with, um, with something that just is absolutely astounding that you weren't expecting in the first place, which is half the fun of doing a painting. A lot of times the direction where you start is not the direction where you, where you end up.